Hi, my name is Peter Cho, and this is Cho's Audio. Music. It's a language almost everyone speaks and feels, intertwining with our memories of something or someone from the past. It's capable to make us feel. But music doesn't have an ABC. I mean, it does. But how do we digest and develop what kind of music we listen to? This can obviously vary for everyone, but this is how I and I think a lot of people digest music. The melody is the very first part of any song I notice. Then further on, the progression, tempo, and complexity helps me to recognize the emotions in the song. Then choruses are usually the easiest to pick up if it's a song I really like. However, I'm not really paying attention to the lyrics as I'm listening to the vibes and overall feeling of the song. After listening to it several times, they are categorized physically and mentally. I will sort them to my Spotify playlist or download them, but also start relating the songs to my own emotions. The song album will remind me of happy, sad, and bittersweet memories. A song like The Hustle playing while having a great time hanging out with my mates is going to remind me of those great memories long afterwards and become something I'll listen to in the future when I'm in a good mood. In reverse, songs that are used in movies and TV shows carry a similar effect of being able to recollect that particular scene into your head as soon as you hear the song. This is true to me whenever I hear David Bowie's song Changes. I can never forget Shrek's transformation as a human riding around far, far away, stunned by his new fairy tale face. And if I'm still listening to the song, this is the point where I would look into the entire album and try understand the lyrics more. I also unknowingly dissect different instrumental parts and start memorizing them. It's just because it's something I've been doing as a kid. An album like To Pimp a Butterfly was something I heard well over a year without fully understanding the lyrical content as I was so blown away for its mix of hip hop and jazz. A track like All Right has a classic head bopping Pharrell beat with a catchy hook, We Gon' Be All Right. And when I had heard it for the first time, I was mistaken for this track to be a turning point into a positive song and the album. But when you listen to the verses, Kendrick is trapped in his own self-doubt, so the hook becomes more of a desperate confession than a reassuring message. And he still falls for uh, prescription pills and materialistic goods. He knows it's wrong and it's against his morals. Psychologist David Rubin, with his multiple studies based on our autobiographical memories, which are the recollections of memories in our lifetime, found that the memories made during our adolescent years was the most accurate of any period in our lives. He concluded in his review paper that this was the period where most of our favorite material and events occurred. His work would soon be continued by his colleagues throughout the late 90s with an experiment that was done by gathering two groups 
the elderly and college students and played them a popular song from 1935 to 1994 and asked cognitive questions if they had remembered the song, how they felt about it and if they liked it. The results clearly showed that the older group responded better during their young adult years, the 30s and 40s, as well as the younger group in the 80s and 90s. However, it was also discovered that the younger group had responded to the 1960s. Since both age groups showed mutual responses to the music in the 60s, the term golden age of music was being used. So why doesn't everyone think the 60s is the golden era of music? Because it's not. A similar experiment was done a decade later, this time with the top two tracks of the Billboard charts from 1955 to 2009. The younger group showed similar responses to the previous experiment. However, their golden era of music had shifted to the 80s. So they believed that the golden era was being affected by what their parents listened to as teenagers and being introduced to their music early on causing these cascading remnants bumps. And this definitely explains my liking for the Bee Gees, Earth, Wind and Fire and all the music she enjoyed. So it's clear your individual music taste is heavily influenced by your memories and what you're exposed to and how you associate the music in your life. <laughs>